With the new year, we wanted to do something different with the show, and we thought there's a lot going on with Wake Forest. So starting this week with this segment, we're going to be having a Demon Deacon guest on every week throughout 2024, fresh off a big win against Miami. We thought the first featured Demon Deacon should be the man that we hope to hear a lot from over the next couple of months, and that's Steve Forbes, Wake basketball coach, joining us. Coach, after watching cut-ups against the win, uh, or in the win against Miami Saturday, what jumped out off the screen for you? I didn't think we had very good shot selection, and I thought that our shot selection really hurt our defense uh, in transition because they were an elite – they are an elite – <clears throat> uh, defense, uh, offensive transition team. And so we didn't turn it over much, maybe 10 times. But if you take nine bad shots, that's 19 turnovers, in my opinion, that leads to more chances for them to run out. And we could guard them in the half court. We did an outstanding job guarding them in the half court. It was transition and offensive rebounds. And so those are things that you got to clean up as you move forward if you want to continue to win, especially in this league at this level. And so probably – um you know, that would be the negative part. That's the coach in me. Um, you know, I thought we played well. I thought we had great fight, great grit. Um, you know, they they had they tried to run away from us a couple times, tried to extend the lead. We didn't let them. We got the thing to overtime, got down, you know, five in overtime, went on an 8-0 run, and then won the game. And so um, I thought that, you know, and then Boopy played outstanding. You know, he's, he's really playing at a high level. And, you know, um, he just really willed us a little bit there when he, we needed a big buck. He made that big three. I love that you go to the negative part, though, saying that that's the coach in me. Is it more difficult or easier to coach a team after a win or after a loss in terms of bringing things to them yeah. out of the next game? It depends on their maturity level. You know, this team, they can handle it. You know, like some teams cannot handle success. And so you have to constantly stay on them. You know, and, and and I'm always on them, but these guys are pretty mature when it comes to, like, if I tell them, we had film and uh, walked through last night, we watched it all, showed it to them, you'll do it again today and then leave. Uh, they're pretty good about trying to fix their mistakes. Um, but the more, you know, you, I've been on one one season, we went 35 in a row, you know, when I was at Wichita State. And so it takes a special group of people to um, to be able to handle that and continue to improve. Because what happens a lot of times with winning is it masks your problems. And sometimes you're not as good as you think you are. You just find a way to win. And then that catches up to you. And so I'm always on guard for things like that. Because I really believe that teams either get better or get worse each week. And I think Florida State's one example of that is just getting better. And, and, you know, sometimes it just it takes a little time. Sometimes it just takes, you know, win a game and get some confidence. And so um, I think it'll be a hard game for us tomorrow. Do you know? how mature this group is yet? Or is that something that reveals itself as the season goes on? I think they're very mature. It starts with, uh, you know, Efton and uh, Cameron and, uh, you know, Andrew Carr. Those guys are unbelievable people, unbelievable players, and and take care of their business on and off the court. And to be a leader, <clears throat> you have to be able to lead yourself. And so those guys lead by example. Hunter, all those guys. I mean, listen, I, you know, I know, I know it doesn't always equate – <clears throat> but we had a team GPA of right around 3-3 three, three at Wake Forest. I mean, that's that's hard. I mean, this you know, this is a, this is a really, really good school. And, it, and, and those guys work just as hard off the court as they did on the court. And when you're doing that, to me, those things kind of carry over. And so um, they're a mature group. And uh, But, you know, you never know until <clears throat> you get through some adversity, right? And uh, adversity reveals a lot of things, and, and we're going to see a lot of adversity from now until the end of the season. You mentioned Florida State. That's the game tomorrow. The next home game is Saturday. Great crowds with all these Saturday home games that Wake's yeah. having. Virginia is going to be in town 2 o'clock at the Joel. You once joked that – Steve Forbes with us, by the way. You once joked that due to COVID, that that even at your after your first season at Wake, yeah. you would walk around like at Fiddle and Fish and nobody would recognize you. Now you're the toast of the ACC. No, no. Half, half a dozen people were at the Panthers game asking me about Wake Forest yesterday. Every national analyst is talking about your program. How noticeable of a difference is the buzz surrounding the program within town versus where things were a couple years ago? I mean, I think that's 
<clears throat> I think that's a really good thing in town, you know, and, and um, I, don't, I don't get out a lot right now, Josh, you know, um, with my wife's situation, um, it's just hard for me. I, I, I wish I could. I wish, you know, after the game I could go out and hang out a little bit, but I just haven't been able to, you know, and so I've, I've just come home. And so, um, you know, but I know that I can feel it in the arena. I can feel the buzz in the arena, in the Joel. And uh, I said that to John Curry, <coughs> excuse me, um, after Saturday's game that um, I could feel the electricity start to come back into this place, you know, and we, I don't know, we have a pretty darn good record at, at home and, you know, and, and we have a fun team to watch. And this is the one thing I think that makes them like, they're very likable. Um, they're not, they're, they're, you know, it's a team you could easily get behind. And, uh, and again, I'll tell you this, I, and I'm sure Tony Bennett would tell you this, Hubert, Kevin, John, listen, Come out and enjoy the team for this year because you don't know what it's going to be next year. This is just the way, the, the way college athletics is. I'm not saying that I like it. Hell, I'd like to have them all back. And we don't have a senior on the team. But is that realistic? I don't know. But enjoy it for what it is this year. I said that two years ago with Alondis, who put up, by the way, 55 last night in the G League. Um, Jake, Dallas. I said, come on, man. Come on and see these guys. You just, you just don't know, you know. And, and so um, – we got a great home schedule in the league. And so, uh, you know, people are going to come and, and it should be a lot of fun. Wake Forest, that home record. See, you don't count the COVID season. I don't blame you for it your first year. And it was disjointed and fans weren't allowed in the building for most of it. 40 and five Ooh, at home since then. 40 and five. Well, That's the record. You got to have a home. <laughs> you got to have a home court advantage of being good. I mean, you can't, you got to win at home and then you got to go steal road games. And so, um, you know, I think that's something that we've always been able to do is wherever we've been, it's established a home court advantage. I went back and looked after I left Tennessee. I think we, I went four years, two years at Northwest Florida, two years at which I State didn't lose a home game. Then I think in my five years at um, East Tennessee State, we lost, I think, 12. And so, um, you, you, that's just, you got to do that to be, a, to, to, if you're going to be a factor in your league and, and, and then hopefully on the national scale, you know, and so and that's a credit to our players and staff and then people, you know, starting to come back and enjoy watching us play. If you, I'll make a baseball analogy because you haven't made one yet. Uh, Steve Forbes is with us here. If you win, they will come. Mm -hmm. Uh, Given your love of movies and your love of baseball, I can't believe I've never asked you this question. Mm -hmm. What 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 does your baseball movie hierarchy look like? Oh wow, um, that's a good question. I love but I, there's some really good baseball movies, some quirky ones. Um, I like the minor league movies, you know, Bull like the Bull Durham or the. Um, there's an, I can't think of the name of it. There's one before that one. It's kind of based on the same thing, and I won't get it right. Um, I like the Black Sox scandal. Mm. Uh, movie eight eight men eight out. out eight men out and then i guess you could count field of dreams as that if you do yeah you know and that's from my home state i i actually never been there um is iowa like heaven oh, of course yeah it, it depends what year what, what time of year you're there that, um, that movie has to be the peak for the state of iowa though being like a an earthly replacement for heaven literally well when i was a kid we didn't have uh central air conditioning so we just had to open the windows in the summertime and there was a hog confinement right up the road from my house when I was a little kid. And so when the wind was in the right direction, it didn't smell very good. And I remember one time my dad came home and he said, oh, that smells like money. So at a young age, I found out that money smells like shit. And so um, th that's that's kind of what you get in Iowa. OK, and so uh, it depends when you're there, you know, if it's right. Um, but uh, it's a great place to grow up with good people. But I, I like for the love of the game too. Um, I, I've watched that several times, um, and so uh, there's a lot of good. There's a lot of good baseball. I'm probably missing something off the top of my head, but um, there's a lot of good baseball movies out. There. Moneyball is a good example of the last. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, WD, have, WD, have you seen Eight Men Out? Well, have you seen? Hmm. <laughs> Oh, by the way, that drop plays every single time yes. that WD hasn't seen a movie that's it's more new during the press conference. It's more, it's more interesting than him say, saying correct, no. Correct. Uh, have you seen uh, For the Love of the Game? Uh, 
Kevin Costner pitching for the Detroit Tigers. We did that one, I think. Uh, no, we did not. Are you sure? No chance. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. There you go. So we'll 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 get him right. Well, I like the part when Vince Scully, you know, he's doing, oh yes, he's doing the play by play or the you know, not to me that that was that was really neat to hear that when he did that part of it. You know, I, I like that part. We're less than a couple hours away from kickoff national championship game between Washington and Michigan. We need to keep an eye on that where you sit in the state of Florida right now. Well, you know, I'm going to watch the game. Um, I love college football. I, did, I didn't make it to the second game on – we were at Boston. I made it through the Alabama, whoever, what game was at Michigan. Michigan. I, couldn't, I couldn't make it through the Texas-Washington game. Um, you know, I grew up watching the Big Ten. I, I actually, you know, went to the games when Shem Beckler and Woody Hayes were coaching on the sidelines. Um, you went to the games? Yeah, at Iowa. Yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and so I grew up watching, you know, three yards in a cloud of dust. I don't respect what Michigan did. Um, it's one thing to steal signs. Everybody does that. But when you live scout somebody you're not supposed to, that's 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 bad. And so, um, you know, we're not allowed to go to Carolina or Duke or NC State and sit at the game and watch their bench and, and get their, their signals. That's We don't live scout. Nobody does. That's why we have computers. And so, and I don't really understand college football because, like, why don't you just put the thing in their ear and just tell them to play? And why you got all those guys standing over there, those stupid shirts on, and those those banners you can't see over? Um, and so, I don't respect it. I, I like their team. I do. I think they're good. I, I watched the Ohio State Michigan game. I was impressed. Um, so I'm going to go for Washington. Um, and they broke my heart in like '81 or '82 Rose Bowl when Iowa finally made it. They beat us. I was really dis disappointed, but. Um, I, I think Washington is who I'll be going for. Last thing for you, this segment sponsored by our friends at Roll the Quad. So, Ooh. I mean, they have a new beer. They Whoa. have the Whoa. Indian IPA. I mean, every one of these beers goes into your NIL fund. So, I guess Bring we out. Have, Drink out. <laughs> have you had a chance to try it yet? I haven't, no. I'm drinking, I have my Lewis Lit from Suits. Uh, you just got lit up, Cup. So, I thought it was apropos for Josh Graham today to wear my to bring my Lewis Lit. Uh, <laughs> by the way, I I taped my wife taped the Golden Globes last night, right? So I got home, she went to bed. I got all the way to the was it the last one with Oprah, and the damn thing cut out. It, it stopped recording. I'm like, what? So who won? Oppenheimer? I don't even know who won the the movie of the year for the Golden Globes. I mean, Alzheimer is going to clean up, man. Well, they <laughs> did. Cleaning they up did. everything. <laughs> I mean, you know, I was like, I mean, I was just sitting like, you got to be kidding me. Okay. I got all the Steve way. Forbes loves Oppenheimer. Like they read your diary in making that movie. No, it was good. Long. Whew, man. I watched the holdovers after the game with my wife Great on movie. Saturday. That was a really good movie. Yeah. Good movie. Yeah. All right. Steve Forbes, we're going to get um your movie review. Next right. week or the week after that, the next movie that you watch. So be be sure to take notes and let us know what we should be watching. I got a lot of film to watch, so I don't know how much <laughs> that will that, uh, I, that counts as a film. Steve Forbes, thank you so much for spending yeah. the time. Thank you.